I just think it's really about understanding where you're gonna get the biggest bang for your buck. What mm -hmm. is the largest time suck? I would almost start with that question. What takes you the most amount of time, but it is a pretty rote task. There's a, a huge potential for AI to operate in that in that area. If you're running a small to medium sized business and you're wondering where to even start with AI, this is your roadmap. Accenture's Andrea Yoder Clark lays out exactly how AI agents work, where to use them, and why trust and clarity are your biggest assets. The most important thing a small to medium sized business could do right now is to invest in building AI agents. There are multiple areas of the business where AI agents can automate repetitive tasks, just increasing productivity. We see on average across applications of AI, an average productivity increase of 40% when it's done at scale. What do we mean when we say an AI agent, right? Because that's such a loaded term right now and, and there's a lot going on in that space, but essentially an AI agent is programmed to be able to do a series of tasks that you would typically need a person to complete. So in the area of customer service, instead of investing in a larger call center, you know, investing in an AI agent to be that initial touch point with your customers, mm -hmm. and then you can apply sentiment analysis. There's programs out there that you can purchase off the shelf that would apply sentiment analysis to those call transcripts and help you understand what are the largest concerns that your customers are having, right? And then potentially apply automation to route that to the right person to talk to. In the area of marketing, so many things, especially as it relates to anything social media, the automation mm -hmm. of social media responses or inquiries that come from your social media channels, the ability to apply Gen AI to create content for your social media mm -hmm. posts in the area of operations. This, I mean, like I could go on and on, right? But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then we definitely want to want to cover that because I do think when we look at a wholesale business, soup to nuts, you know, like how do you get that flywheel? You know, how do you get that all things, all systems working in tandem? So, you know, if you have, if this condition, then that outcome. And I remember, you know, back in the days like, uh, at Qualcomm in the early days of uh, if this, then that, like websites, even in uh, IoT, you know, uh, Internet of Things construct. So we know automation's been around for a really long time, but it's now this, um, you know, it's the glory days for AI because the small to uh, medium business can actually automate in ways that I think many businesses, larger businesses have been doing for some time. And you being at Accenture, but also being someone that has been in enterprise for a long time, what do you think the secrets of AI that maybe aren't so common, like uh, in terms of you know, uh, what would you tell, I don't know, a young entrepreneur that's looking to fast track their way into an AI business? I mean, if you are looking to work in an AI business and you're young and you are learning to understand what AI is and how to apply it, for, you know, to create value for a company, I would say you do need some foundation in coding because you need to understand how to code and how to build the AI algorithms and, and tools, which is, you know, primarily Python mm -hmm. based these days, right? So mm -hmm. an understanding in, in that for sure. But I wouldn't over index on that now because we're seeing the application mm -hmm. of AI in the field of coding, right? So, you know, historically, when I learned to code, right, you would be you're you're stuck with yourself and you had some like info info informational um websites that you could go to to help you solve a problem when your code broke or it didn't oh, work no. now ai scrapes all those websites and you could ask chat gpt to create the foundation code for you and as long as you know enough about the basics of coding you can figure out the solution to your problem so much faster right so it used to be being an expert in python was like the most important thing and now it's more about how do I think critically around oh, yeah. applying this tool to solve a business need? I think that's where we're going to see 
the largest need in the future is this intersection of understanding the needs of business plus the ability to understand the technical back end and put those together in a way that is super efficient. It's not really about the coding anymore. It's about the critical thinking. Yeah, but I love that you are evoking that the elements, how this comes together is through code and that, you know, you know, we've hearing the ter- we've heard the terms vibe coding, you know, this is all the rage, but that you're really evoking fundamental understanding of how these systems work. And the book that I wrote, How to Win Friends and Influence Robots, I talk a lot about fundamental knowledge. Like, I don't think exactly what you're saying. I don't think that you have to go out and become a coding guru, but you have to understand conceptually you know, how these things come together and how that data comes together and, and how it works. And so I, I love that answer. I also really like what you're saying about the business concept, the business. What are you, why are you doing this? What, what is your outcome? So maybe you could talk a little bit about the promise of AI is efficiency, right? And to me, efficiency is getting there faster. What do you think of when you think of AI and efficiency? Like what, what makes that efficiency really work? I think it goes back to what we just mentioned, right? Having the right people in place who have an understanding of the business processes. Without that foundational knowledge, you don't know what to automate, right? So you have to have... Getting, where are you getting faster? Exactly. Right? You have to understand <laughs> where you could apply that to have the largest impact first, right? But yeah. secondly, I think it's also about understanding where you're going to get the biggest bang for your buck. Because, you know, you can Mm -hmm. automate an email category categorization process in your email inbox, and that might help you be a little bit more efficient. But if you can automate, you know, create an AI agent that takes all of your customer service calls for you in the initial stages and then sends you a transcript about what they were about, and then you take that next step and automate a response once you understand what those calls generally, the patterns in those calls are, and then you automate responses to various people that are already prepared to answer that particular type of problem, now you've reduced probably 50% of the workflow, right? I just think it's really about understanding where you're going to get the biggest bang for your buck. You know, what Mm -hmm. is the largest time suck? I would almost start with that question. What takes you the most amount of time, but it is a pretty rote task. If those two things come together, then, you know, there's a a huge potential for AI to operate in that in that area. Make sure you're subscribed to Mind the Machine podcast, like the video and leave a comment letting us know what you thought.